guys and welcome back. Received a few emails uh, on my email via my website um, about extend accessories and whether I could do a video on it. So during my research of said video, I, I sort of found that the user manual on the TC website was a little bit vague and not really filling you in regarding how to make these. So I decided to put a video together for the people that have asked me. So without further ado, let's stop the waffle and let's get started. The first thing I look at is technically what is an extended accessory. So I've written a little a little blurb here. This is my understanding. So please, in the comments below, if you have a, a different understanding, I'd, I'm more than happy to see what you think um, of my explanation. So I basically see a an extended accessory, or what I call them as an EA, is an object within train controller which provides a means of controlling a real device comprising of a set of components. So an example of that would be, could control a crane, I've seen people do that, complicated signals on my layout will also control uh, an engine throttle on my bar and local panel. So how do we go about creating these? extended accessories. So they're created in two steps. So the first step you need to set up some sort of template. So this video is not going to be going on about how to do that because you can get a quite artistic. So the ones we're looking at are my semaphore signals. They're like a Weissman type old school semaphore signal which is European. And so they're created by creating these templates and added to the switchboard. So that's the first step. Then the second step is defining the properties within the accessory which maps the DCC addresses and how we control the real device. Let's get into it and I'll take you back to the computer. Okay let's get started so here we are on my fallen log railway switchboard so just a blank one here so first thing we get a look at is creating the extended accessory so it's basically done in a two-step process first you create a template within train controller that is something that's put on the switchboard so you can liken it to an object such as a left or a right hand point so the beauty of these are not only can we add operations to them we can add triggers and conditions which is and it's also a clickable object so that's not like no other object within train controller step two within train controller for the EA is once the template's been defined what this the template defines the the general properties of the control interface and it maps it to the DCC addresses so what that actually means is you can start setting your DCC addresses to it um, just got to be mindful they have to be consecutive addresses so here's sort of the end product so I know this is a bit uh, putting the cart before the horse but this is ultimately what you can achieve so we've done some semaphore signals here so this one here is emulated on a Weissman 4500 which is the home signal which is just a stop and go signal so this has just got two addresses so that's the go and you'll see the little green light light up there and then that's the stop aspect of the signal and a little red light so the next one is a still of iceman that's the 4502 which is the three aspect signal which is the double um coupled so you've got right now you've got the the stop aspect you've got the go or proceed but under the uh the amber caution light for proceeding at a slow speed and then you've got the go aspect. But what we'll do now, we'll actually begin to start uh, defining extended accessory. So what we need to do, we need to be in edit mode, which we are there. Then from there we go to, we need to click somewhere on the switchboard proper. Not sure why we need to do that, but it's obviously necessary. Um, other than, you know, unfortunately if we don't do that, that uh, just grays out the or the window out when we try selecting the, the the EA then from there we go to the tools menu you'll see there the accessory click on the accessory with the left mouse button and scroll all the way down to extended accessory now obviously I've got some already started in here so if you start afresh you'll have none of these so it's just a matter of going manage 
and then we type in new and we'll just leave it at this point in time accessory number five because it's the fifth one that i've got that that i use so we go and then just close that off so at that point in time we've um we've got a new extended accessory now what we'll do we'll start defining it so at this point what we can do you can see that we've it We've created extended accessory number five. We can go into the properties at this point and go to the generals tab. So we'll rename it. So what we'll call it is test on YouTube, something similar, call it what you will. Okay, let's go and explore this uh, extended accessory a little bit more. So as we did in the last part, we set up test on YouTube. So we're gonna go into the properties tab so with that, we get this, this interface here. So out there is where we named it before. So in this control tab is what we want. So the first thing we really need to set up is what are we going to use this for? So this tutorial is going to be more based around how we set these signals up. So these are three objects high. So there's one, two, three. I don't know if you can see that. So the way we're gonna set it up here is the dimensions of it, and it's one object wide. So you can see if I start playing around with, with the dimensions there, so that's obviously one by three. Now, this here is depending on what size you're gonna run your switchboards at. So mine are 20 to 20, I've got it blown up right now, um, which obviously just makes it larger or smaller, because obviously the bigger it is, the more defined it needs to be regarding the the object that you're going to create because it's all created by little colored little squares and this one here is whether you can you can zoom in and out on a particular part of it so to probably to start with you start it on by one and then as you progress into something more like this you would zoom right in to to define and tidy up uh, the image you're trying to create okay so the next step is to define what control aspect we actually put into this so for these schedules you'll see this little interface just here so these what we're looking at doing are switches so what you do you hover on the switch like that left mouse button you just drag it in and you'll see a little wrench come up and drop it in and click so at this point in time we're just gonna we're not gonna worry about the artistic part of it because obviously something like this takes quite a while to build it's just more the the defining and getting these things to work so you'll see there's there's two states here so an on and an off effectively so this is how you build these scenarios here so we'll go to the first one which is like that so from there if you just want to very basically we'll, we'll go and edit this image so no image has been specified you want to start editing the one so yes that's what we do so it comes up with this little interface here a bit like the rest of um, defining objects within train controller so we're, so what we're going to do we're going to make this nice and easy so for the on state we're going to have green cross so all we're going to do is we're just going to go and so as i said that's very very rough so um so that's the green square for the on so we'll go and we'll go yes for that and then we'll go and do the off one which is the same so same thing click on it edit no image has been specified do you want to edit an image yes so this is what it does so we'll just do quickly run red over here run it down as i said it's going to be very very quick just so when we start playing around with the on and off part of it where we know which state we're looking at okay so the my ocd got the better of me so I when i went back through editing i've actually tidied these up so now you can see that we can actually click on the different states of those so how did i get these little black sticks here um so i had a quick play around with that so obviously back into edit mode double click back into the accessory back to the template and this is the background so it's just a matter of drawing the background there so that's how these other ones here were drawn here's obviously the uh, the accessory object there and two of them on this one so at this point what we need to do you can see down here we've got the state so i don't really like state one and state two so to save confusion i'm actually going to go and rename that so how do we do that so what you do you go into the properties tab and brings up this so here's the state so it's a little bit of a an odd way of doing this but it appears that you sort of hover over the name 
hold the left mouse button down and then it'll come up where you can actually free text over it. So we want to get rid of state one. So aspect, we'll call aspect go for green. And we'll do the same with the next one. Click on it to get the flashing cursor to come up. Stop. Now, there must be some sort of bug within this. So if anyone can out there and tell me why it does this, but if you leave the aspects in there, then just type in go, it seems to pick up whatever's up here. So you've got to get rid of all the aspects, just have stop and enter, and it'll be aspects stop, if that makes sense. So I'll show you here. So if I just leave go there, and I'll get rid of all the aspects, push enter, so then you just get one aspects and go. So I'm not quite sure why it does that. So if anyone can put a comment below why it might do that, because that stumped me why free world would go that way but there's probably a good reason for it so at that point in time you can either okay out of it but now what we need to do is each aspect what we got here are going to stop we need to create the state for it so what we mean by that is how it's going to operate when we add operations and triggers and the like so how do we do that so we'll go to the operations tab now you can see i've already put them in there for you so let's start out afresh we'll get rid of them so we're going to do the switch command so so the first one we're going to do is we're going to add that state so you can sort of, sort of see how that state goes so we're going to go to so that's the off the stop state and the go state so you can see that's the same as the last one so what we do to change that is just come over to here and sorry we go down to the bottom here and just click so we won't we'll leave everything else there so that's swap the states over so I'll go and show you so that's state so the go is state number two and the red aspect is that one there so a bit easy to see there and okay so that's state number one so I've got state number one for red on stop state number two for go so at this point we don't need to worry about any of these at this point in time so what we can do we can just go out of that now that in its crude form is ready to go so you might think that looks a bit strange but it is pretty well no different from what we've got here so we've just got two aspects that will turn on and off depending on how we we set it all up so how do we do that so what I'm going to do is we're going to go across to the main layout or the main switchboard, I should say. And we're going to have a look at this one here. So where I've dragged that from. Okay, so this is up on the bar on board here. So I'm just going to double click on, on this one. Okay, so at this point, after you've set up the extended accessory, it basically just, you can set up the type. So we've put in, because I use Weissman signals, semaphore signals, and that's the product number as a two aspect home signal or go on a stop so then you can actually put the name of the individual signal in there so this is bar on track number one so from there we go do the connection mine are in grouped in areas and then they start at the thousands that's just the way i looked at doing it so this is 2001 we got this one 2002 2003 and probably somewhere in the layout there's a 2000 so they all go on one four pole accessory decoder so these types of signals only require these types of signals sorry these types of objects i should say only require one basically address so they're a bit like a turnout that so there's basically a state one and a state two off and on off and on type thing so how do we go and put further justifications or triggers and conditions in it so this is how we've done it so this is not the most prototypical way of doing it but this is the way that we move forward with it to so to in, to to integrate nicely into my railway so from here we're in the connections tab we go to properties so this will bring up all your various properties within that object off that properties we've got our operations our triggers and our conditions this is why 
EAs are so powerful because there's no other object that has these three that are clickable effectively. So with the operations on mine, with this particular one, it doesn't have any any operation. So it's 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 not relevant for this. So so how I run my signals here are so so we got an and so we need both these to be true for it to go to so what that actually does is so for it to go the internal signal needs to go green so this little signal here and also then this route between here and here needs to be active for that to go green so that's that's the most prototypical way on my railway I thought it was to to get these signals to operate there's obviously a myriad of ways you can do do this but this is the way that we did it so with the the stop aspect so you, you basically leave that blank and on this particular signal we've got no conditions either so so what we'll do we'll go into one of these these three aspect signals just have a look a little bit at the st how the states are set up so they are a little bit a little bit different because obviously we've got two independent arms that are moving so first of all they run with two separate addresses concurrent addresses because there's two solenoid motors that actually operate them so what we'll do so generals tab into the template so this is setting up the the EA itself so as you can see we're a little bit different there so so we've got two independent arms so as, as I said before we've got aspects go stop and slow and they're all we'll toggle through them there so that's slow two arms 45 degrees with the yellow light yellow and green light go is the top arm 45 degrees green light and stop is obviously is horizontal bar red light so we'll go into the properties of those so as you can see so state one which is going to be go is switch command of state two plus base address number one so what that actually is going to do is the top arm goes up to 45 degrees and the bottom arm comes up to vertical so it's not showing effectively so we got the, the green state so stop will be just have state number one so that's it horizontal arm and the slow is is the, the the other side of of the go. So the top arm will be state number two. So that will be at 45 degrees as for go. And then we have got the switch command, which is base address plus one, but a, but a different state for the 45. The, so the bottom arm to be at 45 degrees. So hopefully that makes some sort of sense. You just got to sometimes it's a little bit of trial and error to to get them right, but it's just a matter of playing. If you have a look at the, the way the states are set up there between the the two arms so you got the little white dots on both on the right hand side whereas the go will be slightly different so the top arm is exactly the same regardless of whether it's the proceed with caution and obviously the other arm is at 45 degrees there as well so as i said hopefully that makes sense um, if you need any more clarification on that just let me know and i will um, try to answer your question so just comment below okay guys that's uh, the end of this video on extended accessories do apologize obviously a little bit longer one but it is actually a little more complicated to to get these up and running so hope you enjoyed it and i'll see you next time okay guys make sure you make comment below make sure you click that little bell icon to be advised of upcoming videos give it a thumbs up share with all your mates and all that other good stuff make sure you go to my website www.modelrailroadtechniques.com. Thanks for watching. See you next time.